Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I want to talk about a hyper-aggressive strategy unique to the Lithuanians, thanks to having an extra 150 food in Dark Age. For most civilizations, if you are going to make some militia in Dark Age, it happens quite late, with militia arriving at something like 9 or 10 minutes. The Lithuanians, though, can pull off a unique militia rush that has two militia arriving at the opponent around more like 4 minutes. In a normal Dark Age build, that's likely the time your opponent is getting their first boar, or just starting onto berries, often without loom. I'm going to show you guys a recorded game of the strategy sent to me by Hera, one of the top Age of Empires 2 players in the world. The player he's up against is about 160th on the Definitive Edition ladder, and around 17 to 1800 on Vubli, so this is definitely something that works on a competitive level. During the build, the first 10 or so villagers have to do the exact right thing to make this all work. So I'll walk you through that and then show you a game while chatting with Hera about the strategy. The first step is to pick Lithuanians. The second step is, once you start the game, to have two villagers make a house. You need two doing that in order for it to be built fast enough that you don't stop villager production. The third villager makes a barracks, yes, as your second building, normally something that you would never do. Not only does that use up all of your starting 200 wood, but that'll also occupy a builder for 50 seconds, which puts you back about 15 food compared to normal. Luckily, Lithuanians have an extra 150 food, so there's some to spare. Now the scout has to be active while this is all going on. It needs to be looking for sheep, as well as just importantly, finding your two boar. After the house is done, the two villagers then need to go to wood, and not onto the sheep like you normally would. Normally, food income is the big priority, but remember this time you only have one house. In 50 seconds, you'll need to start making the next house, which is only possible with two lumberjacks at this point. That means now at 25 seconds into the game, you're just starting your food income with the first villager created. When the barracks is done, you can then immediately queue up two militia, something that's only possible for the Lithuanians, again because of their extra food. The lumberjacks will drop off 10 wood, and then you'll have to force drop off when they have 3 to 5 each and that's when you'll build the next house. If you force drop off the wood, the house should come up just as you need it. The barracks villager will also have finished building that at this point, and he can switch with one of the two lumberjacks or join on sheep. Either way, the rule is you need to maintain two on wood and house duty. Meanwhile, the second militia should come out sometime just after a minute and a half. They cost 120 food, which is covered by your starting extra 150, with a little extra to make up for having villagers on wood so early. At the end of this, you should have 60 gold, which is still enough for loom, and if done near perfectly, it won't actually result in any town center idle time. Your economy goes on as if you had the normal starting food once you have 6 on sheep, and then go up to 4 on wood, using straggler trees until you can save up enough for a lumber camp. After that, you can lure your boar, and then continue basically as usual. And that's what makes this strategy so powerful, is that aside from needing a few more on wood to make up for the early barracks, your economy should end up being pretty normal, while having two militia distracting your opponent is going to make their Dark Age pretty messy. So now that you have an idea about how it all works together, I'll let the game play out on the screen and bring on Hera to chat about some of the decisions he made in the game, and any general advice he has on how to make it work. Let's check it out. Well, hey man, welcome, welcome. I'm hoping to get some insights from you about the Lithuanian Super Drush, since I know you've tried it a few times and it's something you're tinkering with. Right away, jumping in, the build seems super tight. Getting the first two houses up in particular involves dropping off wood, and then you're also taking three early villagers off food. Where would you say is the easiest place to mess up the build? The way I think of the build is that the first five minutes are the most important and the hardest to get down as well. Like you said, with all like the force dropping going on, building houses and, and the barracks, of course, probably the easiest place to mess it up is when for, you just got your militia out and you're trying to go across the map, scout your opponent, and also keep your TC uh, running and make sure you're not getting housed as well at home. The best thing to do is just to make sure you're like shift queuing the right villagers and making sure you're just being as efficient as possible with your tasks so you don't get overwhelmed with what you have to do at the same time. Yeah, I find for me the boar lure is another really hard part because that's right as your militia are usually showing up. Yeah, you have the boiler coming in, uh, then you have, you're creating a militia and trying to send them out as fast as possible, and of course, a force dropping your food, because then you, if you don't do that, you have idle TC. So there's a lot of things that can go wrong in the first five minutes, and it probably takes like a few runs of the build to make sure you're getting it all down perfectly. Yeah, it also seems like scouting is really critical in making the whole thing work, and there's this tough balance between finding your own sheep and boar versus scouting your opponent and having your scouts support the militia. 
It seems like you got a bit lucky in the game finding your two boar right away. And do you have any rules of thumb when finding the right balance there, especially if you don't find the boar in a pretty reasonable time? Yeah, that's really tricky. So the whole idea of the build is to go as fast as possible. So of course, that implies that you have to scout your opponent and know where you want to hit him. Because if you spend the first five minutes running around with your militia, then of course, you're not accomplishing anything. I think my rule of thumb is that you need at least both your boars. You can do without a couple of sheep, uh, because then you could just send extra to berries, make a couple of farms. You have the time to do that. But if you don't have one or two boars right away when you need them, you're going to start falling behind on villager production, and you're never going to be able to get to feudal age on, in a good time. So I would say prioritize finding at least one boar. I would go for two before moving out. I happen to get lucky finding my two right away. But there's also the added benefit that if you can go forward with your scouts and your militia and take one of their boars, for example, that's also another thing that could be done with the build. Personally, I don't take my opponent's stuff out of just like sportsmanship of the game. But uh, if it's like an all-out game and you want to just take any advantage you can get, that's definitely something to look for. So yeah, rule of thumb, find your boars at home, then move out. You can do it without a couple or four, even four sheep. It's fine. Would you ever move out with the two militia and then send the scout later since it's a little faster and might be able to catch up? Or you'd wait for all of them before sending them out? Oh yeah, definitely. Like if I needed one extra minute with my scout at home, I think you're right. Send the militia first. Get the scouting with the like you can just split them up, get some scouting with them, and then send your scout uh, afterwards. And like you said, he can easily catch up or go the other way. If you went, you guessed wrong with the militia, you can send your scout the other way and hopefully find your opponent faster. So I'm curious your take on the two militia versus the usual three that people are more used to. Is there an argument for going with three ever and idle your town center a bit, or is two just strictly better? Uh, that's actually a good question because generally we see three militia for the drush and we rarely see two with any other sieve. Uh, but for me, I think the build is designed so the first two come out and you don't have any idle time. So it's strictly a good thing. If you start to factor in idle time in exchange for a third militia, you're kind of forced to do damage or else you're, you start to fall behind. And that's for me in a build, never a good thing. You don't want to force yourself to do damage because you have to assume your opponent will respond optimally. But there is a thing you can do to just add in the third militia later, like let's say like one or one minute or one minute and a half after the initial two. However, I don't really like that because as you can see in the game, your opponent is likely to defend from the drush by either getting a loom or quick walling his resources, in which case the third militia usually won't really accomplish a whole lot either. So for me, two militia is just the way to go with Lithuanians. So speaking of which, what is the goal with the militia? Because obviously you can't take out the town center and kill five or six villagers or anything like that. So what are you hoping to accomplish with them? Yeah, of course, it's just two militia. I think your main goal is to force the reaction from your opponent, delay them, and buy yourself some time. So killing a villager is actually not really the, the goal. It's, of course, ideal. It would be really good to kill a vill. But what you're really hoping for, it's just to... Like I said, distract him and force a response. In this case, the response can be force him to get early loom, which we saw from your last video, actually hurts you a little bit more than maybe someone would expect. And also, uh, you can force them to wall in all the resources, which makes them a bit more efficient because it makes the villas bump or maybe you know blocks them. And obviously, each palisade costs a few wood, so forcing down you know however many palisades is also uh, some form of damage. I think, yeah, that's pretty much the best thing to do. Force reactions, delay your opponent, and if you're lucky, you can get a villager as well. Okay, so in the game, it seemed like he reacted by trying to go up as quickly as possible, in this case with an 18 pop scout rush, and I think having Indians and the cheaper villagers definitely helped with that. Do you think, in general, a quick advance is the best way to react to the strategy? Um, I think it really depends on the situation. First thing to factor in is the Civ matchup. Like you brought up, he was Indians, so it definitely made sense to go up fast and go for the scouts. Uh, FCA, who's another Civ, like, uh, I don't know, Byzantines, who don't really get too much from going up fast, besides maybe cheaper skirmishers, one could argue that they can add in a couple of militia of their own in Dark Age, just to kind of, like, even out the playing field, take out your militia, maybe counterattack with some militia, because they can add in three, uh, and then play, like, two ranges in Feudal, or even just go for a fast castle. So I think it depends on the Civ. In general, though, the best thing to do is to make sure you're safe at home, before moving out with your army, because it's just two militia, you can easily clear it, and you don't want to be taking unnecessary damage while you're trying to attack your opponents. That's a good call. I like that you point out it's only two militia at the end of the day. It's not really that scary. It's just mostly distraction. Yeah, it's, it's important to keep things in perspective. I see a lot of players overreact, including myself and you know plenty of others, overreact to some aggression. Uh, keep things in perspective. Two militia can easily be fought off by Vils or just walled out. So maybe like, get up to Feudal Age, get two scouts out, you know, clear them off. Uh, and then just go for the counterattack, because usually the game transcends into a standard feudal age or even like a fast castle-ish build from both players because 
after the first five minutes, it ends up being just a regular drush. So react to it as you would react to a normal drush, I would say. So I noticed in the game you followed it up with archers. And would you say that's the best way to follow it up as a Lithuanian player in general? Or again, does it really depend? Um, I think once again, you have to bring up the matchups in perspective here. I noticed my opponent was going really fast up and that indicates scouts to the Indians most of the time. Uh, and so I, there's no point of me adding in a stable at the start of feudal and going for scouts myself because then I'll just be behind on numbers. It doesn't really make much sense. So I figured I might as well go for archers because it might force him to go for some skirmishers. Or I might, you know, catch him off guard and get some good damage in. I think it really depends on your map as well, because another option could be just to wall up and, like I said, go for a fast castle. You could even add a stable if your opponent is going, say, skirmishers or archers to clean up your militia. The beautiful part about a drush, in my opinion, is that it buys you time and it lets you adapt to what your opponent's doing. So you make the first move with the two militia, your opponent reacts with whatever move he does, and then you have the time then to react with another move. Make it a calculated move and make it make sense in relation to what your opponent is actually doing. Yeah, it does seem like a very flexible opening. So did you initially come up with this, or did you modify it somehow from what someone else was doing? Uh, so I actually initially saw the idea for it on AoE Zone. I saw someone mention that with the 150 food at the start, you can do a really, like an instant rush, they were calling it. And so I didn't have a build, but I had the idea. And for me, that's really what's important. So I went in single player and I tried, yeah, I messed around with it. Basically, I wanted to do it as fast as possible, while also, like I said earlier, keeping perfect TC villager production, because I don't want to sacrifice anything for the speed of the build. And I uh, came up with what, you know, what I did in the game. I'm not sure if, even if it's optimized or not. I'm sure there's different variations. This is just the one I came up with. But yeah, shout out to that guy on AoE Zone. I actually forgot who it is, but uh, he's the guy that gave me the idea. Okay, let's see if I can find him. <laughs> it's tough, man. It was a long time ago. So do you think there's any other civilizations that have the potential to do something kind of similar? Or is this completely unique to the Lithuanians because of the extra 150 food? Uh, I think there's some civs that can do somewhat of a fast rush, but no nothing even close to what Lithuanians can achieve. Doing the barracks as the first building is something that only they can get away with. There is Persians who get an extra 50 food and 50 wood. They might be able to do something with it. But then again, Persians also create vills faster, so generally they're not going to have enough food to keep the town center going and the militia. So it's pretty much just Lithuanians that could do it. However, other civs, say Celts, Japanese, yeah, shout the speed of the law for that. <laughs> um, and um, maybe Malians who can get up like a faster drush, maybe even skipping the mill, making the barracks first, um, and then getting the militia. But nothing close to what Lithuanians can do. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting bonus. I know you have another video of a gameplay featuring that strategy, as well as a ton of other types of videos on your channel doing tutorials, build orders, all that stuff. Where else can people see more of your games? Yeah, so I stream pretty much uh, like a few times a week on Twitch. I think it's Hera underscore AOC. So you can check me out there for like high level gameplay. Uh, I also upload my best games from stream uh, on my YouTube. And uh, I also sometimes include some guides and build order videos on my YouTube as well. So I just, I try to cater my, my content to people who are trying to get better at the game at all levels, beginner to intermediate, uh, even to advanced as well. So whoever you are, if you're trying to get better, there's probably something on there for you. Well, I really appreciate it, man. Always nice to hear the insights from a pro player. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Awesome stuff, bro. Good luck editing the video. It was a pleasure and I'll catch you around. So that's the Lithuanian Instant Drush. And thanks again to Hera for joining me to chat about it. Hopefully I've inspired you to try it for yourself next time you're Lithuanians, or at least now you know to keep an eye out for it. That's all for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.